What's up, everybody? P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 12 of my favorite 31 albums of the 70s countdown. We're doing it each and every day here this month in October 2023. 31 days in the month, our 31 favorite albums across all music genres of the 70s. I'm only doing one album by any band or artist. You can certainly pick more if you like, right? There's, there's a lot of great ones out there, and many of our favorite bands and artists in the 70s had uh, way more than one really, really great album, right? So I can totally see people wanting to pick more than one. If I did it, it'd be five or six bands probably that would take up the whole thing. So I didn't want to do that. So we got a wide open playing field here. Let's get to my number 12. This is the third studio album released by this American band. Came out July 26, 1973, recorded at Robin Hood Studios in Tyler, Texas, and Arden Studios in Memphis, Tennessee, produced by Bill Ham for London Records. I'm talking about that little old band from Texas, ZZ Top, Tres Hombres, Tres Hombres, yes indeedy. Look at that feast, right? <laughs> God almighty. Yeah, I mean, uh, this to me is my favorite ZZ Top album, and it is one of the great albums of the 70s. What a kick-ass album. Billy Gibbons on guitars, leading backing vocals, Dusty Hill, bass, leading backing vocals, Frank Beard, drums and percussion. Some absolutely amazing songs on this album. <clears throat> now again... Whether you just call them a blues rock band, a hard rock band, or a bluesy hard rock band, or a southern rock band. They're all those things. I included ZZ Top in my southern rock countdown because I consider Texas part of the South. <clears throat> and, you know, to me, a lot of their music is just this bluesy hard rock stuff, which, again, Skinner and Molly Hatchet and all those other bands, that they do similar type stuff, right? Sure, there are subtle differences, right? Like, but I get it. ZZ Top, I think, is a little bit different than some of those other bands. But it's still, to me, it's always been Southern Rock. That's why I did them on my Southern Rock countdown. People were like, well, Pete, how come ZZ Top didn't show up on your Hard Rock and Metal countdown? It's like, well, because I included them in the Southern Rock one. All right? But they're here in the overall 70s countdown. Of course, they would be at number 12. Waiting for the Bus kicks it off. Jesus Just Left Chicago. Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. Master of Sparks. Hot Blue and Righteous. Man, what a kick-ass side one that is. I mean... First of all, the, the trifecta there. I mean, all, all songs are really great there. But Jesus Just Left Chicago, Beer, Drinkers and Hell Raises, and Master of Sparks. Holy moly, how great is that? Side 2, Move Me On Down the Line. Terrific. Precious and Grace. Lumbering, heavy. LaGrange, one of their most noteworthy songs. Chic and Have You Heard finishes it off. I mean, and throughout the whole thing... You got the rumbling, tumbling rhythms. You got the gritty, scorching guitar licks of Mr. Gibbons, and then the the trading off of lead vocals between Dusty and Billy, which I always love because they both sound really different from each other. Kind of always, you know, I always use this kind of parallel: BTO and ZZ Top, very similar in that you had <clears throat> the bass player and the guitar player trading back vocals, and the guitar player, <clears throat> excuse me, had the sweeter sounds for it vocally, and the bass player had that gruffer, more ferocious kind of thing going on, right? Very similar here. Kind of, I, I like the kind of parallels there. So yeah, I mean, top to bottom, great, great songs here. Charting positions: Australia, number thirty-six; Canada, number thirteen; and in the U.S. Billboard charts, it made it to number eight. Certifications in Canada, gold, 50,000 units sold, and the United States, gold, 500,000 units sold. So, uh, not a bad seller. They, of course, would go on to become even bigger and bigger as the years would go on, and then, uh, you know, with Eliminator, man, poof, through the roof, through the roof. All right, so we got uh, LaGrange released as a single in 1973, the year that this came out, and then the next year, they decided to release uh, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers as a single in 1974. <clears throat> That I think Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers was not that successful of a single for them. <clears throat> Excuse me, man, the allergies are kicking in. So I, I, I mowed and chopped up the grass yesterday and since last night, man. Woof, allergies. Crazy, crazy. Um, yeah, LaGrange has always been one of their more uh, popular, like FM classic rock radio tracks and did pretty well as a single. But, you know, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, that's a little bit heavier. And I think that's like the hardcore ZZ Top fans know how great that song is. But, like, casual fans are kind of like, eh, you know. Don't really know that track too well. I know my five ZZ Top songs and that I, those are the ones I like. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But uh, anyway, let us know what you think of 
tres hombres down in the comments below, as well as your pick for today, pick number 12. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for Channel Donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. So thanks in advance for all your support there. Stay tuned for uh, tomorrow and Sunday. So I will be pre-recording. I will be away this weekend at the uh, Exhumed 24-Hour Film Festival in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. So, of course, I won't be here to record these videos. So I will be recording them all today. So you'll see me in the same attire for three days in a row. But you'll still get tomorrow and Sunday's uh, picks. So don't worry about that. Everything else is already preloaded on the channel. So you got uh, UK Connection. you got Ranking the Albums. Everything's all set to go. Also coming up in just a little while, Martin Popoff's coming in. We're going to be uh, moving on into the fun house once again for a very cool episode all about some really cool and maybe classic live albums that maybe would have benefited from a couple songs being switched out in the set list, right? So that's what we're talking about. For all you folks who love live albums, it'll be a fun show, so tune in in just a little bit. We also got Ken Golden coming up uh, later on today uh, for the Professor's Picks. New albums being released today, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. So thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you soon here with more stuff. I am P. Pardo for Tala, Anuka, and Kira. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>